Hey guys! As you saw by the title, today's video is going to be a few plants that I fill are often marketed as beginner friendly plants, but actually aren't as beginner friendly. In my opinion, I am but one voice on the internet, so you may disagree with me. And if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. Just leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. Please thumbs up or thumbs down this video letting me know what you think of this kind of content. All right, let's just get into it. The plant that actually inspired me to make this video is a fiddle leaf fig. And I don't know what it is about these, but they really draw in beginners. Since they do seem to draw people into the plant keeping world, whether it be like serious plant collecting where you're gonna end up getting hundreds of plants or more kind of something to decorate your house with, I do think that that leaves companies marketing fiddle leaf figs towards beginners, even though they really aren't that beginner friendly. So something to know about fiddle leaves is they require a lot of light and they're super intolerant of incongruent waterings. So I know something that people commonly experience with fiddle leaf fig is um, browning of the leaf. A whole variety of different like care things can cause that to happen as well as leaf drop, which again, a whole bunch of different things can cause that to happen, which makes it kind of confusing and difficult to like figure out what you may be doing wrong with the plant where you could be going wrong with it, which I don't think is very beginner friendly. I like vocal plants, especially for more beginner type people, but that vocal, being that vocal over so many different things makes it really hard to narrow down where me, what may be going wrong. Something I see a lot with fiddle leaves is new leaves will come in with like red spots all over them, which really isn't that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure it has to do with lighting. I don't actually have a fiddle leaf fig anymore because I got rid of it because it was too much of a diva for my liking. But yeah, that seems to be something that kind of stresses people out. And I don't think a stressful plant is a good plant to keep in the beginning. I really don't. So that's why fiddle leaf fig is number one on this list. Although they are super beautiful and I will acknowledge that they're very pretty. Kind of weird, but pretty. The next plant are Calathea. And you guys know how much I love Calathea. I do think they're plants that everybody can keep, but I don't think they're great plants for people to necessarily start out with. The best plants for people to start out with are ones that are tolerant of a lot of different conditions. And Calathea just aren't that in my opinion. Um, not only that, but there is a lot of misinformation about them online. Like I remember when I was first keeping plants, I did end up getting a Calathea like right off the bat because they're beautiful. And I loved the fact that they fold, like the circadian rhythm is so cool. But when I was researching how to take care of the plant, I saw that you should keep the soil moist, which in my beginner brain meant like water it constantly, keep it wet. That really isn't like the best way to go about them. So I do think it's one that maybe if you're given the right direction off the bat, it could be a good one. But more often than not, the information like on the internet isn't entirely correct or easy to decipher as a beginner. You know what I mean? Different varieties of Calathea are on the different level of difficulty and for sure, do not start off with the white fusion. As beautiful and tempting as it may be, that plant will hurt you time and time again. At least it's hurt me like three or four times now. I swear to you, I have gotten this plant four times and then each time I'm like, I'm never getting this plant again because no matter what I do, how often I spray the thing off or treat it with like, like pest treatment measures, somehow the spider mites like don't care. They still thrive. <laughs> on the white fusion, what is it? But she's beautiful, I'll admit she's beautiful, but not worth it in my opinion. I will never get a white fusion again. Watch me a month from now with a plant haul showing you my new white fusion. Bet, huh, bet. <laughs> All right, so next up are alocasia, and I do actually have a few alocasia or maybe one, do I only have one? I have an alocasia Friday, but I recently cut all of the leaves because that thing is a pest magnet, which is why I don't think it's the best plant for beginners. Well, reason number one, I don't think it's a really good plant for beginners. It draws in pests, especially thrip and spider mites. I don't know what it is about <laughs> my alocasia Friday in particular, although I kind of have seen this with other alocasia varieties as well, but pests are just drawn to them and pests aren't something we really want to be dealing with in our beginning stages when we're already trying to figure out 
a watering routine, getting them potted, finding them good placement, and then also like fertilizing. Pests are like the least of our worries. So just having a plant that kind of draws that in, it seems like that pests just love to munch on isn't a great route to go, I think. Next up is begonia. You may have noticed I'm getting quite a bit more into the world of begonia. I love them. I think they're so cool and like alien looking and kind of ugly, but in like a beautiful way, a beautiful artsy way, in a unique way, I don't know. But I don't think that they're a great option for beginners because again, they're a little bit more finicky about waterings. Um, they're kind of on the same page as like calathea. There's a lot of misinformation about them and I think a lot of times as beginners we don't really want to go delve into the world of terrariums and I kind of think that's the best route to go with begonia but as a beginner we just really aren't thinking like that and I say we I really mean me but maybe the general public maybe I'm just very dumb compared to the general public, but I personally would have never wanted to get into, terrar into terrariums in the beginning because that's just way too much for my little pea brain to handle. Let me know if your little pea brain can't handle that either, or if you kind of agree with me. I don't know. Begonia. That's why. Yeah. Next up is kind of one that I feel might be an unpopular opinion, but I really don't think peperomia are a great option for beginners. Just because, like I stated on the first plant, the beginning of this video, I think the best beginner plants are very tolerant ones and I don't find peperomia to be tolerant when it comes to watering routines. If they're watered one time too fr frequently, it seems like they're very, very hard to come back from that and they root rot like that super fast. So. That's why I don't prefer to recommend them for beginner planty people. Although again, it does kind of vary variety by variety, but we're just talking like as a whole, you know, generally. And I do think peperomia are another one that people like to go for, for the, in the beginning. I do, I really do. They're cute and they're fun, but they just rot so fast, so fast. As a beginner, figuring out the watering, what's the word? routine, the watering finickiness or watering temperament tolerance of different plants or their needs, I guess, is just kind of difficult. So yeah, I tend to, I tend to avoid recommending plants that aren't tolerant of a little bit over a little bit under watering. Next are croton, crotons, crouton. <laughs> I used to call it that in the beginning. Croton's. So I think this is one that since it's so brightly colored, people are really drawn to it first because it looks so different from like the green of other plants when you're still figuring out that like plants look different from each other, you know? I've had a few of these in my collection. I don't have any now and I really don't have plans to get any in the future. Um, I mostly got them because Ryan thought they were really cool. And don't get me wrong, they are beautiful, but every croton I've tried, I've moved it to a spot. It's been happy for a while. And then like out of nowhere, it seemed like it would drop its leaves and I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And it was just kind of a never ending process of it completely dropping its leaves, trying to grow it back, figure out what I was doing wrong. And I really never figured them out. So maybe this is a me issue and I'm like projecting that onto other beginners. But even as somebody who I feel, I take care of a lot of plants like pretty fairly well. Um, I don't think I'd be able to handle a crow and even even to this day probably a hundred years in the future But I do know some of you are really great at keeping crow in so maybe it's just like a personality thing, but um, For me, I personally would never recommend a beginner to get a crow in because it's annoying But they're beautiful like I mean all these plants are beautiful, but this one's extra annoying next is maybe the most marketed towards beginner plants and it's succulents and i don't think beginners and succulents mix all the time sometimes sure most of the time for the average beginner plant person the typical average typical beginner plant person no keep them separate <laughs> And the reason for that, going back to the watering routine thing, when you're trying to figure it out, you, I think it's kind of stuck in a lot of our minds that you water your plants once a week. I don't know what it is, but when I first got plants, I just, for some reason thought I had to water all of them once a week. And that's just not true, especially succulents. I sometimes go like a month between watering my succulents 
and it comes back to like different lighting, different humidities, kind of changes how often you're going to have to water your succulents. And they are ones that over water it, water it too, water it once too frequently. And that thing is going to rot like fast. For the most part, again, it changes a little bit variety by variety, but the succulents you find at like big box stores and most nurseries, um, that's going to be the case in from what I found. So especially for a plant, beginner plant parent who's wanting to be able to really take care of the plant like frequently to try and learn about plant care a little bit more, um, I don't think succulents are, are the way. I really don't. Okay, next up is actually a plant I again will never introduce into my house for various reasons that I've stated on plants I've already talked about on this list. Number one reason I don't like ivy, for beginners especially, is spider mites. Indoors, they just get spider mites like a white fusion. White fusion and ivy are on the same spider mite level in my opinion. Um, I just don't like ivy indoors, period because I do find it to be be temper, temperamental indoors. Um, they kind of brown and just don't look great inside. And I know some of you guys are probably like, what are you, Harley, what are you freaking talking about? My ivy I have at home is beautiful. And I know that, I know that some people are going to be able to keep them very happy and beautiful, but I just don't think that that's something most people are able to do. But I mean, if you have a beautiful ivy indoors, like please send me a photo on Instagram. I would love to see it because it's a beautiful plant. I just don't think it's a great one to keep indoors, especially for beginners. And I can't really vocalize why that is, but they're just not easy. <laughs> they're just not. They wanna fight us. They're mean, they're bullies. So the last plant on this list is actually Diffenbachia. Number one, this plant is pretty toxic. So I don't know, I try to avoid keeping them in my house. I do have some toxic plants, don't get me wrong. There's levels of toxicity and Diffenbachia is definitely like on the higher end. It can cause a lot of numbness. Um, and if your animal eats too much, it can make them really, really sick. So, <sighs> I don't know if it's worth keeping in the house, like just for that reason, but like I can't really talk because I do have some toxic plants in my house. I just keep them away from my pets. But as far as care goes, this is another one that I feel rots pretty easily or gets yellow leaves quite quite easily for like various different reasons. And really you don't have to worry about yellow leaves if it's like one here and one there, which was the case when I had a Diffenbachia plant, like one would yellow here and there, one would yellow here and there. Um, but it was something that I wasn't used to. Like I kind of always, as a beginner, I kind of always thought plants at the slightest sign of browning or yellowing, I needed to do something to take to like change how I was taking care of my plant to stop that from happening going forward. But that is just kind of the life cycle of plants. And I think as beginners, like we maybe don't necessarily get that, completely understand that yet. Even just like one yellow leaf can be a big cause of stress or a little bit of wilting, which they do also wilt if they're not watered enough or also if they're watered too much. Yeah, I just don't think it's a really great one. I think it can really, stress a beginner plant parent out. I mean, again, if you disagree, go ahead and let me know. But yeah, those are all the plants I'm gonna mention in this video. If there are any others you feel aren't beginner friendly, please leave a comment down below stating the plant and then why you feel that way. Um, I think stuff like this is really, really helpful to see from like more than just one random person on the internet. Uh, so yeah, I think that's helpful. And if you disagree again, let me know why, because it's okay to disagree. It really is. It really is. Just be nice about it. All right. So those are all the plants I'm going to mention in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.